Hey, C3, good to see you. Welcome to the creek this week. I've been abandoned by my fellow pastors, as you can see. Uh, Alex is on paternity leave, so he and Bree are uh, dealing with their brand new baby, Janora. And Dan is uh, taking a week of vacation. But I just wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about um, AC3's missions world to uh, make fully devoted followers out of irreligious people. And um, well, how that's, that ball game is going to change as we think about reaching and making disciples out of Gen Z and young millennials. The, I was just having a great conversation with one of our young adults, and we were just really kind of grooving on, on there's an opportunity here and there's a massive challenge. And, uh, and the challenge has to do with the way specifically that Gen Z is married to technology, that, that technology in some sense defines the culture. And just like we would have to understand the culture of, let's say, a, an unreached tribe if we were trying to do Jesus work uh, in some indigenous setting, uh, we'd have to understand that culture in the same way this is the defining, in some sense, the defining characteristic of the up and coming culture. They are digital natives. And so uh, what does that create in terms of realities? And for us as disciple makers, I think we have to recognize that this is where, first of all, people live, that uh, in some sense, the movie Ready Player One, where, where you know, people would you know, go about their physical lives only very briefly in order to retreat and to run to and to work in a, in a completely virtual digital environment is, is, is almost not science fiction anymore. It's, it's very close to what we currently do. We live our lives in some sense online with avatars that are digital representations of who we are. So that's where the people are, but then at the same time, that is creating deficits. I think we're recognizing that, that online living is adding to our anxiety, depression, and polarization. So when we talk about you know, how we make disciples out of this group, I think we recognize that there's, there's a point of need, there's a point of felt need that's arising. And when you combine it with some of the social realities that a lot of our young people are coming from broken home environments, that that the felt need is going to be for touch, for reparenting, for community, for, um, when I say touch, I mean real physical touch, hugs, um, community, hospitality, uh, looking at another human being in their physical eyes and relating, confessing, and a lot of the things that really, when you look at the scripture, define New Testament life. They went and broke bread in each other's homes. They greeted each other with a holy kiss. They gathered every week. They um, uh, held hands. They laid hands on people. There was a physicality to their living that our digital lifestyle creates a deficit for us. In some sense, then gospel living it, uh, is an answer to those deficits that we're creating there. But to do that, we have to go where they are. So we can't just eschew the technology. We can't just throw it out. We can't just say it's all bad, and we don't. So to me, the movie The Matrix sort of summarizes a little bit. If you saw the movie from 1999 with Keanu Reeves, the freedom fighters are living outside this digital reality that everybody in the world is plugged into, and they're living in this virtual world. And the freedom fighters uh, don't completely reject this digital world, they actually strap it on. They go into the digital world to make friends and to get to know people so that they can pull them out and have them experience the freedom of living in the real world, breathing real air and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's gonna be a good summary of kind of some of our disciple making stuff. So we're gonna have to embrace the digital world so that we can um, call people in some sense out of the digital world into real living in intimate relationship with each other, in intimate relationship with God, which requires us to live in our human skin. It requires us to live as fully realized human beings of which Jesus was the first and forerunner. So um, one of the things that will be a tool for us is to continue to kind of direct people to online resources. And what's coming in the next little while is we're going to take some of our Ask Anything blogs where people have hard questions about the faith, and we're going to distill them into video segments like this. And we'll get some interaction with actual question askers and some real hopefully cogent and logical and reasonable um, responses that defend the truthfulness of the Christian faith. Uh, to make that a better tool in your hand, we'll also chop those up, hopefully into bite-sized pieces that we'll be able to uh, be able to share around easily, and then to draw people into those resources. We'll also have Ask Alex, which is sort of a youth and young adult version of the same thing, and Alex is going to be answering hard questions from his uh, contingent, 
And so those will be available to you soon. So watch for that on the AC3 website. And, um, and so let's be thinking very, um, I think, um, well, intentionally about how we are going to make disciples in the new world order and um, to be able to translate the changeless message of Jesus' hope into a changing world. 